You need a small gift in a hurry. These little tissue covers on a clip are perfect. Now, there are lots of tissue cover tutorials out there, and I have taken the best elements of a few of them, added some ideas of my own, and come up with a quick and clever way to make this cute version. Hi, I'm Amy, and I make things. Today, I'm making these handy little tissue covers that are perfect for gifting. Come on, I'll show you how. These little guys are perfect for teachers, teens, coaches, instructors, quilty friends, crafty gift exchanges, or maybe just for you. So what makes this one different? It's completely finished on the inside. It has this cute little swivel hook and the trim is applied all in one step. Here's what you need. You need two coordinating scraps, at least seven by nine inches. You need a half inch swivel hook. You need a piece of grow grain, ribbon, or twill tape, about three and a half or four inches. You need a piece of lightweight fusible interfacing that is cut to six and a half by seven and a half inches. You need your rotary cutter and you need a pack of travel tissues. Okay, welcome to the sewing machine. The first thing you're going to do is press your scraps. Press, press, press. These are already pressed. This is a great place to use novelty prints. It's a great place to use orphan blocks, small pieces. It's just fun. Whatever you do, fun. You want a your outer piece and your interfacing. You cut these to six and a half by seven and a half both the outer piece and the interfacing. And the lining you cut to six and a half by eight and a half. And that's inches, guys, sorry, American measurements. Six and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And I know it seems weird to cut the lining larger than the outer piece, but it will all become clear in a little bit. Then you're going to fuse your interfacing. And just a note here, guys, be careful that you've got the fusible, the rough side to the fabric. Otherwise, messy, mucky, mucky irons. You can just press that on, you know, fusible. little cows and my lining. Now I'm going to take my lining and my facing, put them right sides together and so I need to adjust my seam gauge. A quarter inch seam on the edge. That's a generous quarter. Here we go. I'm going to put my stitch length at about Eh, about a two. Two is fine. Whatever you quilt, whatever you piece your quilts with, that works. I'm just using a neutral thread. Now, I'm going to take this side and pull this over to meet the edges again. So you'll have this loopy loopy gappy situation here. Same deal, quarter inch seam down this side. Easy peasy. Now here's the tricksy tricksy part. I'm going to pull this. So I've got my line, my outer piece here and my lining here. I'm gonna match up my seams and I'm gonna mark my centers. You can press it in, but I just, you know, squeeze it really hard. <laughs> it works, but you can press it in. Just if you're, you know, picky about such things. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I know, don't fall over. I'm gonna take a pen and match up those centers that I just met. I'm gonna pin it. I know, 
Amy's using a pen. The world has not stopped spinning. And here is my little pinch mark. You can just see it right there. Match them up. And put in a pen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers and put them in these little gappy areas. And I'm going to flip these seams to the inside. All right. I'll do one side at a time. I'm going to pin it again. I know. There we go. Put my finger. Look, see how it gaps right there? This is what causes your lining to turn to the outside. I'm going to take that. I'm going to turn this little seam allowance in and pin it right there. Just like that. So now it's nice and flat. Your seam allowance is pinned to the inside. Same thing on the other side. Sort of spread it out, flip it, pin it. And don't press it yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see which side, my cows are directional, right? So this is a directional fabric on the outside. I need to see which way is up. Okay, so this side is up. So this side is where I'm going to leave my opening. I tend to do it on the top because we reinforce it several times in a later step, and that makes sense. It doesn't really matter, but that's what I do. So the cows are right side up. And I'm just going to sew right here. Don't sew over pins. Here. I will stop, go backward a little bit. Then I'm just going to lift my presser foot, slide that whole thing forward to skip that area, stitch, go backward, remove my pin. And I'm just going to hold this nice and tight. And sew right off the end. Now on this end, on this side, see, so now I'm going to trim this little part that where the thread joins. And so now I have my opening here. But I'm going to trim this. I mean, sew this side. Same deal. Only this side I'm going to sew all the way across, so I will remove this center pin as well. Bless you, Casey. Now, be sure and take this pin out, <coughs> or it will stab you. And we're going to turn the whole thing right side out. A little tedious, but that interfacing actually helps. It stabilizes it. So now when you get to the corners, you want to push your corners out. You've got that folded corner. Look, it left that little lining space just like that. And you want to poke all your little corners out. You can use a chopstick. You can use one of these guys. This one's from Clover. It's a just a point turner. I like this one really well because you got a nice sharp hair marker edge on this end and a smooth but pointy little guy to turn your points out. This is big enough and roomy enough inside that it doesn't make it's not really hard to do. Whatever you've got handy works just fine. All right. And now, like any flip and turn project, you want to work that seam so that you get it nice and even and at the edge. OK. And here at the top where my opening is, you just want to turn that in. 
You can pin it, you can hand finish it. I don't do that. This is what I do. So now my edges are turned enough and I'm going to press from the center outward and that's going to give me the best result on this edge. So from the center outward. And this is my little Rowenta travel iron that I love so much. And before I get to the top, I will tuck that in again because I see it's wanting to flip out just a little. I know, me too. Sometimes I want to flip out just a little as well. Just give it a nice press. Give it a good steam if you're using a steam iron, but no big thing, all right? So now you have your little guy. He's finished all, he's on the floor. Now you have your little guy finished all the way around. You do have this opening at the top, but we're gonna get to him in just a minute. If you are inclined to top stitch right here on this edge, now's the time to do it. I don't do it because I don't feel it's necessary. Also because I'm extremely efficient and I don't want to change the thread on my machine continually. So now I'm going to just very scientifically mark the center by pinching it really hard. It's a tried and true method, guys. All right, so see, I have my little mark there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my corner, not to it, but just over it, barely like a breath over it. Then I'm gonna hold this here and I'm gonna do the unthinkable again. I'm gonna pin it in place on both sides. I know, what's the world coming to? And then this one, and this is the trick to keeping it closed, is you're gonna pin, you're gonna overlap. Here, let me see if I can close up. You're gonna overlap that just a tiny bit, not a quarter of an inch, just like an eighth of an inch if you're into measuring. Just overlap your corners right there. I'm going to pin that in place. I'm going to do the same thing right up here, just barely kiss those corners and pin this over here in place. Oh, a bent pin with a different pin. And then you're going to take your handy little swivel hook and you're going to thread your either grow grain ribbon, I'm using twill tape, whatever you've got. I like something that doesn't stretch. I have twill tape, so that's what I'm using. Double check, make sure your little cows or whatever directional fabric is right side up because otherwise, well, otherwise your birds fly upside down, guys. I guess this one's mine. <laughs> so you're gonna take and you're gonna, you can, I can still see my center mark right here. If you want to mark it with a little chalk, you can do that. And you're gonna lay your twill tape in. I use this open V sort of method because it's easier to center up and it creates less bulk right here. We have all those places meeting. Now I don't pin right here because it's hard to get around the pin, but what you do want to do is make sure you're not high up in the space like this, because if your needle hits this, it, your machine makes a very bad noise. Very, very bad noise. And it can really damage your machine. So make sure that you get it tucked in nice and easy like this. Your little twill tape is gonna just stick out the edge, close up. Oh, you do, sometimes you'll have to fiddle with it. You can pin if you want. It's probably useful. I tend not to because I'm not usually holding it in the air like this. All right, so now we're gonna sew just shy of a quarter of an inch. All right, I'm gonna adjust my seam guide to be, I hate to say scant, but just a little teeny bit 
smaller than a quarter of an inch to ensure that we close that opening in the top, all right? And I just hold it all together like this. Move it over here, put my needle down. Here you wanna lengthen your stitch to about a two and a half, nearly three. And I'm going to back stitch at the front or at the beginning. I'm going to reinforce across here as we go. And then I'm gonna back stitch at the edge. So I'm gonna... My little edge flipped up, make sure it stays down. I'm gonna go backward over that entire area and back forward on it. And then back stitch at the edge. Now, take out my pins. Notice when I place the pins, I place them so that they would be out of the way of the sewing line. And here, you just trim your ribbon or tool tape. I trim it about an eighth of an inch away, leave a little bit, it just reinforces it. Now on this side, I think my pens may be a little close, we'll see. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end and right across this point where they all meet. There's a kid playing basketball outside if you can hear that banging, sorry. And I'm gonna take out my pen. I'm gonna take my little snips and snip any little stray threads. There don't seem to be very many, but there are always a few. And now I'm gonna turn him right side out. You can use your point turner here if you want. I find it not to be needed. I just poke it out with my fingers. You can give it a little steam right here if you want. I generally don't because I always end up burning myself when this little guy gets heated up. I do give that a nice tug so it straightens it out. And then you pop in your travel tissues and you're good to go, just like that. Now see, I could have gotten my little, my twill tape a little bit closer, and generally I do, but like I say, generally I'm not working up in the air like this. But that's it guys, it's so simple, it's so easy, and look at those cute little cows. Like I said at the top of the video, these are great gifts for anyone to whom you want to give just a little something. They're cute, practical, very quick to make, scrap friendly, and they're easily made age and gender neutral. All the supplies are linked in the description box and in a pin post down below. If you found this helpful or fun, be sure and smash that like button and subscribe. A word of warning, it's really hard to make just one. I have a tissue cover army growing here. Along with those supply links, my email contact is also below and you can send me pictures of your tissue cover armies. I hope you have fun making these little guys and I hope you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. Now, if you need ideas for quick quilts, check out this video. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.